Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to look at D5 version 2.2, its new features and improvements. Welcome to the very first D5 tutorial on the channel. I'm very happy to finally cover this amazing software. I follow D5 on and off since its release and I'm very impressed with what I could create in a short amount of time as well as what I've seen from others in the community. D5 is currently at version 2.2 and that's what we're covering today but this video is going to be a bit of an intro slash feature review since it's the first on the channel. Now as always there's a timestamp in the description so you can skip to the part that most interests you. So D5 is a GPU rendering software running on Unreal Engine and NVIDIA RTX technology. Now D5 is extremely simple yet powerful and takes most of the guesswork when it comes to lighting, materials, environments and camera. Along with its easy to learn user interface, D5 is a great tool to create photorealistic images and animation. So let's look at the specifications because D5 is GPU based, you need at least a good graphics card. Now at a bare minimum, D5 needs an Nvidia GTX 1060 with 6GB memory running on Windows 10. And as of the recording of this video, I'm using an Nvidia RTX 3060 on Windows 10. Now considering these requirements, D5 is not that taxing on your machine. So the software should run just fine on your typical 2022 laptop and desktop as long as you are above the minimum requirements. So some fun facts about D5, it works on most 3D modeling platforms. So we're talking about SketchUp, 3D's Max, Rhino and Cinema 4D. These are all huge names in the ArchViz industry and chances are whatever platform you're into, it's supported by D5. D5 also offers a cloud-based model and material library. We know how time-consuming some of these things can be. So D5 makes it easy by offering these ready-to-use assets. Now, currently we are looking at 7,000 plus models, including vegetation characters and particle system dynamics, as well as 1,400 plus PBR materials for your indoors and outdoors project. Also, the entire library is available online on the D5 website, so you can take a look at everything that is available. And best believe you will appreciate the quality of these assets, especially because they can be customized. As for the price, D5 has a free community license, and with it, you have access to the path animation tool, photo and video rendering, post-production tool, custom asset library, and more. And this is really everything you need to produce high quality work and surprise your clients. It's unbelievable that this is actually free. Now the pro license is going for $360 a year and this gives you access to the D5 widgets. Now the D5 widget really sets this software apart as far as offering more creative tools to expand your learning. So you will get that. You also get the cloud based asset library and premium support. And last, you can also get the pay as you go pro license for $38 a month. So this is our scene. This is the Lake Lugano house by JM Architects. I got this model from SketchupTextures.com. The link will be in the description. Now for the most part, this model is very well done with high quality assets and components, but I just did a little bit of cleaning up before we import it to D5. Now to import the model, I use the D5 SketchUp Converter. This is a very useful and convenient tool. You can send your models to D5. You can update the model to update the changes. Sync in view so the camera movements match between both applications. You can import all of your scenes. And this right here opens up the D5 lighting toolbar, which I use to add all the lights in the model. As you can see, you can add the point light, spot, strip, and rectangle lights. And this allowed me to set all my artificial lights before sending things to D5. And that was pretty much it. It didn't take much to prepare the model. So now that we're ready, let's move over to D5. Before we dive into the new features, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. This really helps with the growth of the channel and so you don't miss the next time we drop a new video. 
So here we are inside D5. This new version is packed with new features and improvement. So let's get right into it. So first we're going to look at one of the brand new rendering features, which is part of the weathering system. In version 2.1, it used to include the cloud, fog, wind, but now it includes precipitation settings for rain and snow. If you go to your environment tab, check under weather, you will find the new settings for precipitation. So click to enable and you will see the brand new transition bar between rain and snow as well as for the settings for strength and ponding. And if you look at the viewport, you'll see how the rain is taking effect on the environment. Now as for the settings, the further you adjust the slider to either end, the faster the speed of the rain or snow. So if I move this back to the center and adjust the slider slightly towards rain, you will notice how we see very few raindrops and a slight effect on the ground. But if you adjust the slider further on the rain effect, you will notice that the rainfall increases as well as the pond begins to be a little more visible on the ground. Now the strength slider controls the size and density of the raindrops at a value of zero, little to no rain. And if you adjust to a value of one, you will notice an increase in size and density of the rainfall. As for the ponding, it controls how much of the ground is affected by the precipitation. At a value of zero, there's little to no effect. And as you adjust to a value of one, you'll notice how a few inches of rain begin to pile up on the ground. Now you have to take some time to appreciate how real and realistic this looks, especially the effect that the rain has on your environment. If you zoom in closer to the ground, you'll notice how accurate the reflections are as far as depicting its surrounding. And if you zoom even closer to the glass, you will notice the water streaks that are generated on the glass. And this definitely takes your realism to another level, especially if your goal is to create cinematic and emotional scenes. Similarly, if I adjust the sliders to snow, I can create different levels of snowfall. The settings allow me to control the density of the snowflakes and how much snow accumulates on the ground. Again, these settings are very simple and will give you the freedom to create more environments by adjusting a few settings. Next, we got some new post-production effects. In version 2.1, D5 already included some great effects to assist in post-production, but now they've added a few more, including tint, vignette, and chromatic abbreviation. So if you use Photoshop, these are all very familiar terms. Now tint adjusts the green and magenta color range. This works really well with the color temperature parameter to adjust the white balance tone. So ultimately, this helps you to create interesting color adjustments in your scene. The vignette effect decreases the brightness on the edge of your image compared to the center. You can see how the image begins to get dark on the corners. Now in photography, this is a very common effect that's produced by lens in the real world. Chromatic abbreviation, also known as color fringing, simulates the dispersion phenomenon of the real world camera lens color shift. As I adjust the slider, you can see how the color distortion becomes visible on the objects on the viewport. So when it comes to post production, D5 is definitely taking it a step further by adding more and more effects. And this definitely helps D5 to become more of an independent software rather than depending on other applications. Another great addition to D5 is the layer management. Using layers is a great way to keep things organized and can be used to separate different elements in your scene. For example, if you look at my layer panel, I have four layers that I'm using at the moment. One for my models, lights, vegetation, and furniture. Now to create a layer, just click on this plus icon and double click to rename. If you look at some of the settings, you can lock these layers as well as turning them on and off. So as you can see, I can easily hide any of my furnitures and all the other elements if I wanted to. 
So this is my active layer and any assets that I add to my scene will be set to this layer, but you can easily change the layers for any of your assets. So if you make your selection, look at your inspector settings and you can assign any layer from this drop down menu. Now, ultimately, you can play with the visibility of these elements in your render and animation to achieve similar results like this. Also in this version, we have new widgets that were added. As you know, widgets offers customized extensions that provide advanced features in D5. So to see the widgets, go to your menu, preferences and select widgets. And here we can see the new features that have been added in this version, such as the projector and the merge project. If we take a look at projector here, we can activate this feature and we also see more information about what it does. So it tells us how to add it to your scene and what type of files it supports. So let's add it to our scene and see what it does. So let's go to add lights and select projector. I'm going to add this right in front of the projector and position the light so it faces the projector screen. If we check the additional settings on Inspector, we can adjust the intensity of the light, the cone angle, the radius as well as the haze, and a couple more other settings you can try. Now the projector lights act as a video texture, so it supports both images and video. So once you add your image or video texture, you can see that it actually plays in your scene. And this is one of those tools that, that is useful for very specific situations. And if you look at the D5 example, you can see how convenient this is to create certain scenarios. The other widget introduced in this version is Merge Project. In the D5 example, you can see how they merge a landscape and a building together. So this feature allows you to merge multiple projects from different file sources into one. So once activated, go to file and select merge projects. And these are the options before you merge the projects together. I'll quickly add a second project. I'm going to merge it with a very simple abstract statue. So if you look at the filter options, it's asking you what elements from both projects you want to merge. So it includes all my nature assets, the lights, the views and the, and the video clips. Similarly in my second project. And here you get to select the location you want to save this new project. Now, once all of that is set, click merge and wait a few seconds for both scenes to merge into one. So this is going to save a new master file for the joint project. So this is the new master file. As you can see, this is both the house and the statue merged together. So I can select my statue, move it around and adjust all of its assets. Now you should be able to update these separate project files, which will ultimately update this one. So this is a really great feature to have. It makes it easy to split work between people, especially in those corporate environment. And it's a great tool when it comes to scene management. The next improvement is custom shortcut. If you go over to the preferences, you can now customize the shortcut for any tools or functions. This is very helpful for those who are already used to certain keys and want to avoid the hassle of learning new keyboard combinations. So definitely a great addition. Another new addition is the brush records. This is a tab that helps you manage the assets you scatter using the brush tool. So if I select this group of trees, you can see my brush history on the bottom right corner of my interface. If I look at my history, you can see I have two, the first one is these trees that I use to close out the environment. And the second one is some shrubs I use to scatter along the grass. I can click here to expand and you'll be able to see all the different trees that I used in this scatter. And you can click here to control the visibility. You can also apply the combination of assets as an eraser. So you can use this to remove assets from the group. And similarly, you can use the same combination as a brush. 
So this lets you modify the scatter settings so you can add more assets back to the group. As far as the new assets, there are new additions such as snow models for landscapes and new characters. So be sure to check the entire library for new models and materials. And brand new in this version are the surface decals. These are decorative graphics you can use on any surface to enhance your visuals. So if you go to your asset library and select decals, you'll be able to see a collection of road signs, damaged walls and pavements, fallen leaves and other graphics. So for example, if I go to damaged walls, I can add some dirt to this wall right here. Once you place the asset, you can move it around. And here you have some settings for the textures. As you can see, you can adjust the normals of that graphic, adjust the transparency. You can even make it emissive. So there are tons of settings here that let you be flexible in using these decals to create more realistic environments. Another example, I can add some leaves beside the trees. And change the colors to match. So there is enough with this release and I imagine they will be adding more in the near future. Now with any updates, you can expect major visual and performance improvements. These are adjustments that push the render result towards photorealism and improve the user experience. So in this version of D5, you can experience some of these in different areas. For example, the accuracy of emission materials have been improved as seen in the D5 video, as well as the global illumination effect on the vegetation assets. You also experience improved camera movements, optimize real-time reflections for multiple light sources, and lower memory usage for large-scale scenes. So I advise you to check the D5 website for a full list of new features and be sure to download the new version so you can try these for yourself. So my final thoughts on D5, this is a very easy program to learn, especially if you're already familiar with ArchViz, the transition is not that difficult at all. D5 offers a good balance between quality and speed. You can create some awesome renders in a short amount of time. And honestly, the barriers to use D5 are very little because it's free. All you need is a decent computer and you can enjoy all D5 has to offer. So hopefully this video was helpful. Be sure to follow the links in the description for all D5 related materials. Let me know if you want to see more D5 tutorials on the channel. I'd like to know what you guys think of the features I've shared in this video. As always, be sure to subscribe to the channel for more content. It really helps with the growth. And so you don't miss the next time we drop a new video. Be sure to also follow us on other social media platform. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.